Right, the stereo in the van has been a pain in the backside since the day I got it. So first of all I had to replace the aerial because it just wasn't working and that worked okay. But it, it's Jane ended up buying me a cheap radio just so I could listen to the radio whilst I was driving around and it's been rubbish. But whilst I've been doing the van, it surprised me how many things are app based, like to do with the conversion. Um, anything from your solar panel through to heating systems, you can get lighting systems that are contro uh, app controlled, battery management, you do all sorts. Plus I wanted a reverse camera on the back of the van because I wasn't sure whether we were putting windows in the back. So this seemed like it ticked a lot of boxes. Plus it gives us sat nav and all sorts of different things. So what I ended up doing was getting a reverse, uh, sorry, rear brake light camera that replaces the normal third brake light at the top of the van. I've got the A6, a Toto A6 Pro. I've never used one, never seen one. I bought it off Amazon, but it looks like it's got really good reviews and it's it's got all sorts built into it. I'll pop a uh, description in the link below. But the main things for me were that I could link the camera into it. It had got uh, a sat nav, I could do DAB radio through it, um, it was touchscreen, it had got Bluetooth hands free built in. It looked like quite a good display. Um, it got gesture control. I, I can't see me using that unless it's uh, some sort of profanity. Um, but I could control a lot of what's going into the camper. And to get this to fit into my van, my van's just a normal single DIN or single slot radio, just a what you know your, your average radio. So I've got to replace some of the plastic surround, which is what we've got this for, in order for this to fit. And I did buy this as a little optional extra. Um, it's a um, little OBD2 dongle, so I plug this into the OBD2 port, which is down by the steering wheel. There's an app then that I can put onto this and then that will basically, if ever there's any um, engine management lights or any issues, I'll be able to see it on the, on the stereo. You can do other things with it as well. Um, and I just thought, well, that's quite a useful thing as well as having that connected via Bluetooth. So there's no wires with that. I can still also connect the phone to it to use the hands-free. It's got uh, the, the ability to connect to two Bluetooth devices. So that seems to be quite smart, really. I'm not really into stuff like this, but I figured, why not? So this is what we get. We'll unbox it and, uh, and, and just see, see what's there. Now let's have a look at the... Uh reverse camera I'm assuming that's going to go into the uh, the back of the stereo that'll be the uh, cable for running from the, the back of the van to where the head unit goes I'm assuming permanent power to the camera some uh, stickly pads, bolts. The idea with this is that it just replaces the uh, third brake light. So again, assuming, but I'm assuming that's to, to bolt the light in. It's worth saying, these were really cheap. I think, uh, I think we only paid 50 odd quid for this. I'll pop a link, it was off eBay. I'll pop a link in the description. Uh, I've got no idea what the quality was like. And to be honest with you, I assumed it was coming from China because there was a lot of uh, a lot of ads on that were clearly from China, but this, this was uh, through the door within 24, 48 hours. All right, so that's gonna connect to the main cable. The connections feel pretty good. And I'm 
guessing that will go into the back of the head unit. You can get a, um, a, re a reverse camera for that head unit, but it just looks, it looked like a box that was going to be stuck to the top of the top of the doors. I wanted something a bit more discreet. That's why I thought that would be, that would be ideal, but it looks all right. There's a bit of weight to it. The plastic's not, uh, not the most expensive stuff in the world, but it actually doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. I'm guessing then that will run that will run to the brake cables and no destructions so we'll just have to figure it out this will be to replace the the fact well where the factory stereo goes there's like a little um, Trap collector for chucking all your uh, coins in when you go through the drive through So this should replace all of that. I have read that not all of these kind of stereos, again, especially with some of the Chinese ones, don't always fit a standard double din. So we'll just have to see. We've got multi-tools and dremels if we need to amend it. The manuals are nicer quality than what I was expecting. And that's all in English as well. This was quite a cheap head unit. I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't big money. So it was it wasn't enough for me to worry about it if it if it wasn't right. It wasn't wasn't big money at all. But that actually looks pretty comprehensive from flicking through it. Gesture recognition. There's only three or four gestures that I know and I wouldn't have thought they've programmed them into the head unit. Uh, screen protectors. That's nice to see. Frosted HD Okay, that's cool. Um, warranty. Twelve months. Very good. Bracketry for holding it. The size of that box just for that. Anyway, it's very well packaged, really well packaged. Oh, looks pretty self, self-explanatory. It's very lightweight. Wi-Fi receiver, aerial. Oh, that's GPS, aerial. USB ports and then for the various speakers and things. That's the front of it. That's nice to see as well, proper 3M sticky pads. Which one are you? Like most of these things, they're normally colour coded, so that'd be the GPS antenna. Mic for the hands free. So I'll go in there. 
face here. Pair of USB extensions. That'll be quite nice actually. Makes a lot of sense. It's got fast charge on as well. Um, I know with my phone, I've got a Huawei phone and it likes the, uh, the, the fast charge. Uh, Jane's Samsung doesn't seem to like it, but no doubt she'll be swapping her phone. Wi-Fi receiver. And different leads. Gonna have to have a read on these just to see what each one's for. Make sure we get the right one in. See what they're really well made actually. They feel they feel really nice. There's nothing nothing feels flimsy about it. That surprised me that has. Okay, ISO connector A and ISO connector B. That's cool. So basically there's there's two different types throughout most of Europe, so they've put both of them in. So if it's got ISO connectors, it'll be one of them. And it looks like it's to do with the power. And if it's not ISO, it'll be that one. So I'll look at this. Cool. Right, and then lastly, this little ABD2. Now, I haven't downloaded the app, I haven't even looked at the app. I just saw it and I thought mm, that, you know, could be useful. So I'll just plug that into the uh, little OBD2 reader. Uh, little OBD2 port under the dash. Uh, it's a slightly older van. It doesn't do any harm just to have it in there. I've not been having any fault codes, not been having any issues. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be taking a laptop away with me if we're away on holiday. And it's sod's law that something's going to happen whilst we're... Uh, on our way down to South Wales or something so and again that was really really cheap I can't remember how much it was but I will pop the prices I'll pop the links to where the uh, where I had them from underneath all right uh, the big reason I wanted to get this done now it's way too early for me to put the head unit in really but I wanted to run the cable for the rear view camera because I'm not far off ready for putting the uh, ceiling in so I'm trying to make sure that I've got everything in the van before I'm putting the ceiling up. So we'll start with the brake light. Obviously I'm a boy, so I want to play with my new shiny toy now, but I don't really need to put this in yet, but I'm gonna and we'll have a play. Okay, so this is the old, old light unit out the back of the van. The easiest way of getting it out is from inside the van, where the holes are at the top. Just stop it so you can get your hand in to this hole and then it's just a 10 mil nut you can undo them from the inside undo the two push the light out from the inside it seems to be a bit easier and then just disconnect that and that's the light out so that's that one and then these are the the fittings so that's off the old light. Now, this is what the new light comes with. So, washer, spring washer, wing nut. And then that goes through the front of the light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse the original nut off the van rather than using these wing nuts. I've got no way of tightening them up properly. I'd much rather get just a 10 mil socket onto that. If you've got a little quarter inch drive socket, you can get that in at the top of that door, nice and easy. Okay, so that's the uh, brake light and camera fitted. That was really, really simple. Two screws, two nuts in the back. And then on the uh, on the inside, yeah, you can see the uh, there's one nut and exactly the same on the other side. So really, really simple to get through. This is the, the wire that plugged into the original brake light. So we can't take the connection off the brake light because that's moulded into the brake light. So what we're going to do is 
snip them off, connect them to the wire that came with the brake light. There is a plug and a couple of bare tails and just connect those in. But you need to check your own wiring, but as a, usually with vehicles, black is usually always the negative. I know there's always exceptions to rules, so check your own wiring, but I'm quite confident that that's negative and then that will be the switch live when you press the brake pedal. I'll just uh, show you the connection. I've just tested it, all works absolutely fine. Picked up some of these off Amazon, little uh, little lights with uh, magnets, and they're absolutely brilliant. USB on the back of them. Um, you can charge a USB device, they charge up off USB, but the, uh, they're certainly bright enough work off. You can have them dim. And then apparently that's for like if you have an emergency with your car, you can set it up at the back of your car. I'll uh, pop a link in the description for them. I'm really impressed with them. Little uh, battery indicator on the back of them as well. Um, they've been absolutely brilliant. So, all, right. all I've done here is literally what I said. So, black to the negative with the wire that came. These are just solid connectors and I've just stuck some um, heat shrink over the top of them just to protect them a bit. And then that just... I'll cut this down at some point now I know I've got it working. So that's the spare that came with the back brake light. Um, and then if ever I need to take it out I can just unplug it and away it goes. So they'll all get tidied up. All the wiring you see wherever it's coming out through metal, like down here, if you can see underneath there, everything here where I've come out through the bodywork, all that will have a rubber grommet around it of some description, but there won't be any any of the wiring against any of the, the metal underneath. And the same as like where this is coming out through here, I'll make sure there's a rubber grommet around every one of them as it comes through, or at least sleeving over the wire. So what we're gonna do now, is feed the video wire now all the way through the van so I'll just set you up on the time lapse and you can see that going through bring everything through to the front and then rip the dashboard apart Okay, I've left quite a bit of slack behind here so that if ever I need to get to the connection for the camera, all I've got to do is take out the take out the light if it's still there or if not, at least know that it's in the middle. And then I can always take take out the uh, the brake light. Um, so at least I can get to that if ever it needs to be replaced and then all that's left now is to get all these wires wrapped once I know every one of them's in its right place all, all the openings will get grommeted all the wiring will get wrapped uh, and then I haven't got to worry about it chafing because I do worry about chafing it's it's not good okay so to tell the head unit that the van's in reverse we need to get a signal basically from the reverse light or from the reverse sensor switch back to the head unit. So what I've done is identified at the back that the wire for this one, this is where the uh, the wires were spliced in for the parking sensors. That was done before I had the van, so a lot of this is going to get tidied up. Uh, if you can see the white wire just there, that white wire has got two red tracer um, stripes going through it. So all I've done is found the corresponding wire under the dash. Now this might look 
quite daunting but it's not as bad as what it looks um, this van it's had stuff done to it over the years but some of it was done at the dealership um, they had a um, I don't know if it was a sat nav or hands for there was something built into them and it looks like it was done at the dealership because a lot of these splices are done certainly not factory done and what I've done is identified exactly the same way so white with two red tracers on it and I've just broken the sheath um, just to expose the copper and then what I can do from there is using a power probe just confirm that that's the right way when I put the uh, put the van I only need to have the ignition on don't need the engine running so ignition on put the van into reverse and that shows up on the power probe that it's the right way to go to so now I can run a wire from this to the reverse input on the head unit that tells the head unit that the van's in reverse and flips over to the reverse camera if you've not used a power probe these come in various shapes and sizes this is just a cheap one but all it does connects positive and negative and then with this I can either send a positive charge or negative charge to a terminal basically or I can connect to an earth and send a positive charge to something or connect to a positive send a negative charge to something just to activate something these are a lifesaver they're absolutely brilliant they're dead cheap but now you can if I pick it up so at the moment there's no ignition on not in gear so it's just running the negative as you'd expect put the ignition on runs in neutral and it's still showing negative put the van into reverse and now it's showing positive so I know that that's me I've got the right one and it should be anyway because of the, the colours so we're all good so I'll pick up off that now Okay, so just connected this uh, blue wire in here. I'm not going to bother wrap. I've ordered some um, white wiring harness wrap from Amazon. Again, I'll pop a link in the descript uh, description. So I've just ran that up behind the dash. That'll all get wrapped and secured up there, and then just brought it out up here so that I can put a, a, a terminal on it. And again, just tested it with the power probe, just make sure it's doing what I want it to, and, and it is. I mean, you take the stereo out and the, the little pockety thing, this is the, the hole that you're left with. So you buy one of these fascias that basically goes on there and turns it into the right size hole and the right shape. But these are obviously in the way, so I'm just going to buzz them out with the multi-tool. Um, this stereo didn't come with a, a cage. Apparently you can buy one, but not during lockdown because they've got nine stuck so I'm going to cut these out there is brackets that I'm going to be fixing to the inside here so I've taken out the air vents and then that means the L brackets can be secured across here I'll perhaps just put a, uh, a fixing strap across the back and then I can bolt everything down and get everything where I want it So 
So to get the brackets in place, stereo's uh, in where it needs to be at the front, and then just through the back, that's the bracket that holds it. So just temporarily I've used some uh, use that glue gun, just put some glue just to hold this bracket in place. So now I can take the stereo out, just notched out here so I can get a second nut in. So now I'll take the stereo out, use some pan head screws and some more adhesive, bolt this bracket down, then the stereo can go back in and get bolted into place. Alright, so that's both brackets in and they're, they're relatively stable. There's no backwards and forwards movement in them anyway. So we'll see how they go. If it doesn't work out, I'll uh, I'm gonna order a cage anyway, just in case. I think the cage is the way forward with it. But we'll see how that goes for now. Alright, so we've got all the uh, wiring done. It weren't difficult, just tedious. So main power to the camera. I've pulled that in off the cigarette lighter. It's a switch live and the wiring is pretty heavy duty for that, so more than enough. So that's brought the live. The thinner gauge wire is what came in the in the packaging, so I'm assuming it's okay. And then I've earthed that straight to the chassis, and that was a, a factory earth point, so that should be good enough for that. Um, and then we've got rear camera supply. That was brought up from down by the fuse box. And that's been about it for now. Um, I need to get a digital to analog converter for the steering wheel controls. Get that wired in, but that's pretty straightforward. So I've got the wires that I need to do that. I just need to uh, order the box. So I'll just pop it back in now and job done. Okay, so managed to get it all installed. It wasn't really that difficult. It's a bit more fiddly with having the, the reverse camera. And there's a couple of other bits still left to put in, which are those wires that you can see up there. One's the GPS receiver and one's the Wi-Fi receiver. I didn't see the point of putting them in yet because I've got a bullet wound in this windscreen, so I'm having the windscreen replaced. But it's actually worked out all right. Um, it'd be a lot easier with one of the installation cages that you can get. But it comes out quite neat. The surround, it's not a perfect fit. When you get up close to it, it does seem to overlip at the edge at the top, but it actually doesn't really take away from it. What I will say is it wasn't as easy as it could have been to get the head unit in. This plastic surround that goes around the outside of the actual head unit itself, I had to uh, plastic weld that together. It looked like it should have come out plastic welded as, as one complete ring. Um, and it must have just missed that process but it wasn't really the end of the world uh, once I got it all in it was fine doing it this way I suppose on one hand it's a bit more secure because you haven't got to get the it, it, you can't just you know use a cut up coat hanger to take it out or anything like that um, you can get access through these side vents these side vents do pull out and that gives you access to your wiring so there, there is ways of doing things with it, um, but I think it came in quite well. A big selling point, point for this for me was that for one, I've got the reverse camera. So that's literally just, there you go. Um, and that works really well, nice and clear. It's really clear at night as well. I'm really happy with that. Um, the screen's pretty clear, but it can, now I've got me, uh, me sat nav. Um, let's see if I can get onto some stuff. So you get your Google Maps and all the rest of it, but the other thing is a lot of stuff now. You've got um, you've got app-based pretty much everything. Heating systems, the M um, MPVT for the solar panels is uh, app-based, and that. I would rather have as much as I can app-based because at night, especially in a camper, you don't want bright LEDs or digital displays just keep you awake at night so whatever I can have through this app it's less to wire in less to think about less to go wrong um, just makes a lot of sense I have tried using things online 
um, there's YouTube on there and all sorts. It works really, really well. Not tried any films or anything like that through it yet because it just doesn't really do anything for me. Um, and then I've got to find a home. There's a pair of uh, fast charge USBs. Um, so there's two of these. So I'm thinking one passenger side, one driver side. I'll figure that out closer to the time, but they are there. There's another USB port at the back of it, um, as well as the SD ports. So yeah, generally pretty happy with it. I think it's quite smart. It makes the van look a bit newer. It didn't really cost very much. And I think for the money, I can't really complain. The sound quality is really good. Uh, if I had something that I wasn't going to uh, get told off for to play on that, I'd, I'd play it for you but pretty happy with it um i don't don't really don't think you could go far wrong with it oh just on a side note i will update or put an add on to this video once i get it done but i am putting a uh, a little box of tricks in the back the steering wheel controls on these by the looks of it are digital i need to confirm that and you have a box that turns it to analog the wires are already pre-installed for using your steering wheel controls but it needs to come into the head unit as an analog signal not a digital signal so you just you buy a little uh, converter that does that for you so when i get around to popping that in i can't see it being a big job i'll uh, get that all plugged in and then show you that as well thanks for watching